Hi friends, it's Sarah from Ruffles and Rain Boots and today we're going to be making a clean gnome with a fur beard and it's oop, a little cheeky. If you'd like to make it, boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here crafting. So look at this guy. I'm actually pretty proud of this. I've wanted to make this combination for a little while and I got a little cheeky with it. Later I also found out it makes a great gnome bottle topper in case you're giving a gift. When I moved, I found a lot of extra pieces of clay and fur, and I thought, we have to make something. So I also have this little cone. It's paper mache, four inches. I'm going to cover it in crumpled up foil. And the reason I'm doing that is because we want this clay to be able to adhere to this all over the place. So I am just going to even wrap it like twice around the actual thing, wrap it up under the inside of the cone, and that way we're gonna be able to create a nice base. Now, you may have seen it, it took me about 45 minutes of actual crafting time to make this, but there is some drying time. All right, so now that we've got that all done, I'm going to take about an inch and a half of air dry clay, and you can see I'm using the 2.2 pound block, I just get it on Amazon, but you can get it at the craft store as well. And I'm going to cut that off. And I should have cut off the front little piece of mine because it was all crusty. I thought I could use it. You'll see me rip it off and toss it to the side. But basically, we're just going to get the clay a little bit soft, and then we're going to flatten it. You can see that's my little crusty piece there. I'll get that in a sec. But what we're going to do is we're going to flatten it. And it doesn't have to be even if you have a rolling pin you use for crafts or you have a glass bottle. That would work. Either way, it doesn't matter. We're just going to be squishing it onto the base. Now, you can see it's pretty thick. It's at least a quarter of an inch thick. Um, I'll make a quarter of an inch thick for the front, which you'll see. This is about an eighth of an inch thick. Just press it on. We want to make sure we have a nice thick base because we're gonna be cutting into that clay. So I make a nice wider base for the bottom and squish it down on the table. I just make sure everything is covered. You can see it's not smooth and that's not our goal right now. For the front piece, you'll see me hack this off. It is not as thin. Um, and the reason is because we're, I'm cutting into only the front piece. So watch when I put this on. You see that? That's a nice big thick piece for the front because we're going to need a nice little anchor for the fur. All right. So I used a very tiny amount of water just on the tip of my finger and was able to blend this all pretty easily without any tools. Okay. So if you want to use tools, you want to use clay tools, um, you can spend hours making it even and perfectly porcelain looking. I didn't. You know, I'm going to show you my imperfections because I think it looks really rustic. I think it looks really cute. I think it, it up plays the handmade aspect in case you want to put these up for sale at the holiday season. One thing about the tip is if you want to create a nice curly Q tip or a thin tip for the hat, put in wire because when you build an armature of wire and foil, the clay is going to less, um, it's less likely to break off. So I figured if I'm shipping these across the country or around the world, I want it really solid. So I broke down the top of my um, foil there and just made a nice little tip of the hat. Now, speaking of the tip of the hat and the body, I'm just using my hands to smooth this out. I rolled it on the table, as you can see, and I, I want to tell you, you're going to want something for this to dry on. I would elevate it. I'm going to show you how I did later. All right. Once you find the front of whichever part you made thicker, we're going to create some cheeks in the back. And I, I don't know. You don't have to do this. Okay. But. I just thought it was cute. So I rolled a little bit like one inch piece of clay and then cut it in half so my cheeks would be similarly sized. And then I used a knife to score the two pieces. You can use a little bit of water to join them as well. And I just blended them in. You can see I'm using my fingers. You don't need crazy tools. You need something pokey, something smooth. That's really it. And so I just repeated that with the second booty. Now, I know I'm going to catch some flack for this, and if that's you, I apologize, but I want to know, like, do you think it would be cute for having gnomes with no clothes? I don't know how gnomes got clothes. I don't, I don't know how we started clothing them. Back to the gnome. Here's the only tricky part of this entire project. You're just going to cut into the clay, and you're going to take a breath, and you're going to gasp and say, oh, what am I doing? What if I mess it up? It's clay. You can just squish it back together. 
So I cut from one side to the other, like halfway along the body in the front, and then I cut another line right below that. And then I'm just gonna scoop out that stuff in the middle. Here's where a toothpick would come in handy because this was a little too chunky for this. So I ended up hacking it up a little bit. So you can see I'm just driving that out and I'm gonna take a tiny bit of water on my finger and just smooth out the top part because that part we're gonna see, so we wanna make it look nice. For the gnome nose, you can use anything. You can build a clay ball, you can build a foil ball and cover it in clay. I used one inch uh, oval or round, cut off the back so it was flat, scored both of the pieces, meaning the actual body and the gnome nose, and then add a little water. This was probably the most frustrating part of it just because I put it on sideways right there, not even all the way around the, the front of the body. But once I got it in place, I used my fingernail, you use a toothpick, anything, and let me get in a little closer. You're just pulling the clay off of the nose and putting it onto the body, smoothing it all out so you get a nice, solid join. I did the top, the sides, the bottom, and then just smoothed everything as best I could. See? This is a really fun project, by the way. I had a great time with it. All right, now, I'm just cleaning it out again because I kind of... Uh, squished a little bit of clay there and now there's a cool part it's time to smooth it so as you can see mine is not smooth I was told these little round balls do a great job in smoothing let me explain I I am not a clay artist so maybe I'm not using them correctly I didn't think they did a whole lot bad part is you do have to let it dry 24 hours at a minimum 48 because I live in a high humid environment and now it's time to sand. Protect yourself. Don't breathe this stuff in. Use a fine particle mask and put it on before you sand. That is a Dollar Tree sanding sponger because I just end up throwing away after I work with clay because I don't want it, you know, really coming all in my lungs. Another tip I have working with this stuff is just tap off what you can, throw this piece away, and then wet down your surface with a um, water, just water, and then use that same paper towel to lightly wipe the piece and you won't have any dust when it comes to sealing or painting. So here's our little guy so far. You can see he's not perfectly smooth. When you're working with air dry clay, I think it's a good idea to seal it um, with a base layer of paint. I like to use gesso or acrylic. You can see Air dry clay is not white when it dries. You can see the difference between those two uh, colors. So if we're using paint, which I will be using, I think a good idea is to paint a base coat, dry it, and then paint a second base coat. That will make sure that no matter what colors we use, they're going to be true color. Okay, so once that is done, it's time to decide on your coloring, whatever you're using. So I used um, this color beard, so I don't have anything that matches that. So I'm going to combine a brown and a very, very light beige to get sort of a skin color that has some depth. So you can see that's the color I work with. I'm also going to put a little white in my palette. Don't tell me what that looks like on the booty. I know what it looks like on the booty. We're just adding some shadows right now. Okay. It's, it's, yeah, it does look like that. It looks like poop a little bit. I know, but when we blend it before that dark color dries, it adds a nice little depth. And yep, I'm adding a little bit more, so don't, don't come after me. I'm also going to mix that same color with a little bit of white to add highlights. Yep, that's on the top of the booty. Okay, so you can blend that with your finger or blend that with a sponge. Either one works. We can do the same thing for the front. What I'm going to do is um, paint all the way around the base. Okay, so our beard is going to cover up the majority of the front, but I painted the base in front, back, and in the underside. And you can see it's not even up at the top because we don't need it to be. I did a second coat of that same color of paint just to have a nice full thick coverage, and now I'm highlighting over it again, just adding the same colors that I did before. And right on the nose, I made a nice little swoosh to give it a reflection and then let that dry. You can see I want to show you this up close. Mine is not perfect. I don't want you to strive for perfection. If you're not a clay artist and you're not working with porcelain, like, does it really have to be smooth? Smooth, smooth? I don't think so. All right, so my tip here is if you're painting, get yourself a flat brush or a bright brush, something that has that nice long bit of straight 
uh, bristles because that right there was about the easiest straight line I've ever painted. That's it, straight across. And it's not the only option. If you want, you can decoupage fabric onto there. You can decoupage a napkin onto there. But I liked the paint idea just for uh, durability and when I store my pieces away or ship them. All right, so I dried the first coat, put on a second coat, and dried that as well. And so you can see here, again, I'm not striving for perfection. I got a little dollop right there that I thought wasn't worth trying to fix. So I did add a little bit of a heart to the nose by making two small circles and then joining them in a triangle at the bottom. That's easy. And then you're going to want to dry that. Now, we need to seal this. Whether you decoupage or paint, doesn't matter. This is Liquitex Brush-On Gloss Varnish. I think it's the most amazing varnish ever. I do love it. It's my favorite. Now, if you are worried about paint running or anything like that, or you want a matte finish, I do recommend the Krylon Clear. You can just spray paint it on outside. It's great. When working with it, you're just going to put it into a different vessel and only cover one color at a time, especially if you're like me and just heat gun dried it instead of letting it dry. In order to dry it all over and apply the varnish to the hat, I propped it up on some scissors and I put those in a jar to let it sit. And here's the fun part. This is my favorite part. I love this part. We're going to measure about an eighth of an inch beyond our channel. So you can measure it just on the fur or with a measuring tape. This is a Glacier Wolf fabric. You can get this online. Um, it's just you know, any color, any size, any pile that you want, use a scrap that you have on hand. Just make sure to measure it so it's an eighth of an inch wider and whatever drop you want. So mine isn't even an inch uh, thick, the fur cut. I'm just finding the center right here. And for those of you who are new, you don't have to draw on the back of the fur. It's, I just did it for you. Basically, you're just going to score the back with an X-Acto knife, pull it off, and there's your beard. Brush it out if you tend to store fur badly like I do. And here's the difference. We're actually going to fold in the sides of each end of this before we tamp down the top. And the reason is we don't want that fabric backing showing anywhere. So we're doing both sides and just going down and gluing the top over just a little bit all the way across. And now... Now it's time to put it on. Make sure it's center, and we're going to tug it right into that channel. Place some hot glue there. Tuck it in to where it looks like it's growing out of the guy, right? Be sure to glue on those nice little pokey out edges so that everything is nice and tailored. Look at that. Isn't this easy? Oh, be sure to roll up the beard and glue any fabric down at the bottom to make sure we have the nice long-lasting piece. And... And little booty. Here he is, super cute, about four and a half inches tall, 45 minutes of fun, a little cheeky. Let me know down in the comments, what do you think? Would you make it? As always, thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun.